What is up, Comfort Killers? I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do me a solid and subscribe to the channel, as well as engage by leaving comments. So I am Stacey A. Cross. Again, there is no E in it. For those that are putting random E's all over my name, there's, not, there's no E in it. Stop it. But I am the founder of The Comfort Killers. I wrote an awesome book. It's entitled The Comfort Killers Book. Comfort Killers, Your Journey to Success. How to change your life using tools you already have. And before I start today, the topic is going to be, you know, why do you need a coach? Why do you need a mentor? Why do you need someone in your corner cheering you on, but also helping you to level up? Before I get into that today, because that is the, the meat of it, I want to say that I am giving my book, it's an ebook, I'm giving the ebook version of my paperback book away, as well as the audiobook. Now the audiobook, I don't know how you learn. If you're if you're an audible learner, if you need to feel the paper between your fingers. Hey, me personally, I love listening to audiobooks. So I want to give that away to you. Just visit the link in this description and or just head over to thecomfortkillers.com to get that for a limited time. Okay, I want to give my book away because I, I believe this book could really, I mean, it could really change your life. What I learned, you know, in this journey, and it is a journey, okay? For anyone that says, oh, I'm ready to get there and I can't wait till I get there, understand that it is a journey, it, the time to change, time to learn, time to grow, time to divert, pivot, whatever it is, and you're gonna need it. And, and, and understand and honor that time. Uh, so the book is, I'm giving it away. It's an ebook form, digital downloads, and the audio book, head over to thecomfortkillers.com or go ahead and hit the description for the link. So why do you need a mentor? Why do you need a coach? Why is it important? Uh, I had to learn the hard way. I first learned that I need a coach back in high school. Okay. I was, I was good. I was good at playing basketball. I was a point guard, shooting guard, man. I dribble between my legs. I do all these crazy moves and I was so good. I felt pumped up, energetic, always kind of been, that player, okay, always good at sports, always competitive in my nature, because, I mean, I grew up playing basketball in the park, I'm playing basketball in the park, I got necks, I don't care if you're grown men, old men, young men, boys, girls, I don't care, I got necks, and I remember one time somebody laughed, like, who's gonna pick her, you know, because I girl, you know, you don't mind me once the girl, the only girl on their team, but I would whip it up past, you know, here, let's go, let's play this game. I go to high school and I'm bringing the same intensity and fire and, uh, it's tryouts and I'm thinking I'm balling. I'm doing all these crazy moves. The girls that I'm playing against, they're soft. They, you know, they, they're very mechanical kind of in, in the way they're playing ball and I'm just fluid with it. Okay. And the coach pulled me aside and said, Hey, listen, I know you could play. You could play. I could see it. You have a passion for basketball. Um, you're, you're good, Stacy. I'm not going to take that away from you, but this is not where you're playing here. This is not the park. This is not the basketball court. You know what I mean? And I was like, what does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? And I was still just like, whatever, man. So I made the team and I had to rearrange the mindset because it's a team sport. It's not an individual sport. See, in, 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 on the basketball court, you know, outside playing with the guys, man, we would do our little moves. Whoops. Feels good, right? But this one, we're running plays. There's things that you got to learn in, 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 in professional and amateur basketball that you can't get on the street. Okay, street ball versus high school ball versus all of, you know, versus the next level. And the next level, it's, it's totally different. It's a, it's a mind, your game got to be strong and all of it. So what I learned is that my coach was able to take me from a street ball mentality all the way up to, hey, okay, now I'm playing high school structure ball, you know, and, and, I, and I really had to level up my game. So that was the first time I really had a coach was in sports in, 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 in high school. But now as a business owner and as someone that's just, you know, soaked 
and involved in this entrepreneurship game, it's the same kind of concept. Because what I got out of business prior to having a coach or a mentor was that I could do it all alone. Okay. I could be the shipper. I could be the website designer. I could write the copy. I could go market the products. I could go write the books. I could deal with customers. I could, I can do it all. And, and furthermore, it's my baby. So that mentality is like the same as cheap ball. Hey, listen, I'm rocking out here. Nobody could touch me, but in entrepreneurship, ah, this is my baby. Nobody could touch it. Okay. Then you have to expand your vision. So the first, the first and foremost is you need someone that's going to be able to take an objective, an objective approach to your game, to the way that you're playing your game, to the decisions that you're making. So that's the number one thing why you need a coach is that you're going to get that objective flow. The next part about it, the next thing, the next, the next uh, bullet is criticism, constructive criticism. You're not able to grow if you only focus on, you know, the things that you think you're doing well. Okay. Because someone else may be like, Hey, you think you're doing that well, but look, look what's falling under the, under the, in the rug here, under the rug, look what you're sweeping under the rug. So I needed the constructive criticism. Stacy, you're doing this. Okay. You, you're doing this great. But look at, look at over here, look at this part of it. And this is the, this is the most vital part. And it's like that 80, 20 rule where uh, a new entrepreneur or someone new in business or someone new to ball or someone new, they will think that it's just dribbling the ball and shooting the ball. Okay. Or a new entrepreneur, a, a new business owner, they'll think it's just this one thing about business. But then they don't have the person to say, hey, listen, you're focused on the, the, the 80%. The basketball player, you're focused on 80%. There's so much more. If you focus on this 20% and get better at the 20%, then the 80-20, the 80-20 comes into play. Okay? And so, so we have these things when you're dealing with the coach. And just before I move on, I had a call with my mentor and this mentor I met when I first moved out to Philadelphia, I was renting from him and I started to observe, and this is written in my book. I told you the story about how I met my mentor and how that all came about and what he taught me from just pure observation really. But what he really taught me was how to focus on the thing that matters. One thing that I know that I need tons of help in, and he was able to allow me to see that is patience. We all come in this and we want, we want, we want it, we want it, we want it. And that's why my whole philosophy is built off of action. You take action. There's no way that the law won't reap any sort of results from that action. You take the right action. You know, you consistently try to take that right action. You're going to get some positive results. The bad action, you know, destructive action, negative action, you're going to still get those results. So it doesn't matter. You're going to get a result. But what actions could you take to maximize that result, to maximize the ROI, the return on investment from taking that action? Okay. So that's what my mentor was able to show me and said, Stacey, you're focused on all of these things. And those things are not important. They are important in some aspect, but that's not your best part here. Focus on this and watch the changes happen. Watch the changes take place. So I'm on a phone call with my mentor who I met in 2014 here in Philadelphia. And I opened this phone call up for my comfort killers. That means you, I opened the phone call. If you're on my mailing list, then you got an email that says, Hey, listen, come on this phone call, talk to my mentor, speak to my mentor, because I believe that having a mentor, having a coach, having people that are, uh, that are able to look at you objectively and say, Hey, listen, that, that, what you just did sucks. That what you just did wasn't right. 
You know, how many yes men's do we have in our corner? You call up a friend if you want to feel good about life. Hey, this is what I'm doing. Oh, great, man. That's awesome. You know, you, you look at other people in business. Oh, man, you're rocking it. You're killing it. You're crushing it. Okay. And then you call your mentor. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right. I'm not going to pat you on your back. That's not what this is for. If you want the feel good, you got to go somewhere else. If you want the real goods, stay here because I'm going to tell you the real, I'm going to show you the real. So again, you, you, you take out the fluff by having a mentor or a coach, you take out the fluff of just hearing the easy, smooth stuff that it's easy to digest and take in. You want to get that hard, that hard criticism that says, and it's not criticism to shut you down, it's criticism to level you up. And if you're able to take that, first of all, a lot of people can't even take that. You tell them one thing bad, oh, you got a typo right there. They're like crying off somewhere in the distance because they can't take the heat. I like the heat, okay? Because things change in heat, you understand? Things change in heat. You put some metal on, on a stove, you could bend that metal now. You could change the characteristics of matter because you applied heat to it. You put, you boil an egg, it changes the egg inside, right? The shell, it's hardened now, it changes. So you apply some heat to something, it's gonna change. So the best thing that you need to do is apply some heat. Who's gonna apply heat? Because you're gonna be soft on yourself. I'm pretty hard on myself. I'm, re I'm, re I'm pretty hard on myself. Someone said the other day, Stacey, you're too hard on yourself. Like, Come on, I, I want, I'd rather be hard on myself than taking it easy on myself, okay? Because I know what that brought me in my years. So my mentor was able to say, slow down because you got to be patient. You got to be able to, to see, okay. And, and envision and go way out and envision. And that takes you to slow everything down. And when he said that, and I was able to work on it, work on myself, I felt, I felt the changes. Okay. So I opened the call up. And I'm letting you know right now, I'm opening it up again. So if you're interested in that, the link is also below. If you want to be able to speak to my mentor and coach, because I think it's so important to have one on your, on your side. And when you ask the right questions, that's another important thing. I don't think that we personally ask the right questions when we're amongst people that, that have done it before, you know, these people have had the experience and we can really learn from their mistakes or their success. We do not ask the right questions. And that's one thing that my mentor taught me. Hey, listen, what answer do you want? Because if you beat around the bush, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get brushels. Okay. You're going to get, you're going to get leaves. Okay. So what you want to do is make sure that you're in a position to ask the right questions. And how do you do that? You're not going to ask your friends. They ain't doing nothing. Okay. And if they are doing something, they're going to tell you something to appease you. You want to ask the right questions. So you get that solid answer. So you know the direction that you're going to take. So why do you need a coach? I told you here why you need a coach. A coach is very important because they are outside of the frame looking at what you're doing, looking at the results, looking at the actions, and they're able to constructively say, Hey, this is where I see that, you know, you're doing, and this is what I believe that you could do. And they're, they're there to cheer you on. So you could stumble, you could, you know, crack your jaw, you could, you scrape your knee, you could, you know, bruise your elbow and they're going to pick you up and say, Hey, listen, mate, I, I told you, but they're going to pick you up. So what I want to do is open the call up again. The call was great the first time. It was excellent. We had a few comfort killers on the call and, and they were able to get so much knowledge from it. If you come, if you jump in the call, the next call, I will give you the audio to the first call, but I want you to get on this call because I want you to, first of all, number one, ask the right questions. Number two, ask specific questions to your needs. My mentor is a real estate investor. He's a developer in real estate. He's a, he's a damn near architect, man. This guy designs his own, you know, when, when he opens up his businesses, he designs the, he's a, he's a very artistic person, but also he's a realtor that, you know, help people buy and sell homes. So, you know, he came up from the, from the bottom, I would say, you know, and once you know his story 
uh, you will appreciate where he is now and the level of expertise and advice that he's giving, that he's providing, okay? And I want you there because you need to be amongst people. You need to, to build your network to be around people that are actually caring about your, your progress, caring about your success, okay? And I want you to be so successful. I want you to jump up out of bed every day with so much enthusiasm and burst because I know you could do it. And I know that whatever goal you have on that piece of paper, I know it could be attained. Why? Because I know it could be attained. So what's blocking you from attainment? Okay, it could be, it could be the self-doubt. Doubt kills a lot. Of, fear kills a lot of people, okay? Uncertainty kills a lot of people. Disbelief kills a lot of people. Wrong beliefs, limitations, bad, you know, poor self-image, you know. All of these things, I mean, they will shut you down and they will paralyze you. But when you're on a call amongst people, when you're in a, in a setting of, 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 of abundance, when you're in a setting of cultivation and, and, and cheering you on and, and letting you know that there's rules and there's avenues and there's laws and there's shortcuts, but there's principles and there's other people out there that are doing it, I know that you will succeed. So I want you on the next call. My mentor's name is Lenny Bazemore. You can go ahead and look him up in Philadelphia. Made, made a killing here in real estate. Uh, he's moving to LA. I'm like, damn, why you move? I, I got, yay, I might move to LA, you know? Uh, but, you know, he's just all around good person. And I, and I know that you're going to get that. And I know you're going to get a lot of value from, I know you're going to get a lot of value from the call. So I'm going to let you hear a piece of the call right now. But click the links in the, in the description or on the page. Maybe I wrote a blog post about this probably. So click the link wherever it takes to get to the next step. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're watching on YouTube. Leave some comments and engage. Let me know what problems you're having, what challenges you're having right now, what issues, what concerns, what you're having right now. I would love to speak on it, uh, you know, on the podcast, maybe write an article about it. Uh, maybe shoot a video about it, whatever you have going on. Let's get this thing going. Let's start engaging with each other uh, because I'm here because I care about your journey to success and you are already on a journey just by watching this. So I appreciate it. And I want to give you my book, ebook and audio book. So go ahead and click whatever links is in your face. I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name. Here's a piece of the call. I would, I would implore you to get rid of that word. Either you commit or you don't, right? Dabble to me means uh, I'll see what it is. I get in. Maybe it works out. Maybe it don't. I need you to commit. I need you to, to, to be very specific on what you want, very specific on what you need, right? Because wants and needs go together. Yeah. You know, so most, people, most people say they don't go together. Well, you know, oh, I, I want a Mercedes, right? But do you need it? Damn right I need it. <laughs> why, do you need it? why do you need it? Because I want it. That's why. You know what I mean? So, so wants and needs, they go together. They're, 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 they're brother and sister. So I need you to want and I need you to need, right? And so that word dabble is too inconsistent. It's, it could be anything, you know. I dabble in this and I dabble in that. You know, I dabble in this a little bit. It's all good. But, no, I need you to commit, Right? So that's the first thing. Get rid of that word. Stop using it when it comes to things that you should commit on. Commit to real estate investing. Now now we're talking. 